Welcome back to the show. This is episode 181 of the Mediocre Alaskan Podcast. Just got back from a hike. Actually, probably more of a walk. Yeah, it's about a six-mile walk on a trail. It went around a lake, and it was in the woods a little bit, but I think if you don't have at least a couple thousand feet of elevation change, I think it's more of a, of a walk than a hike. Unless there's no trail. If there's no trail and you're not gaining elevation, then it's like bushwhacking. But why would you do that unless you're hunting? In which case, you'd say you went hunting. Anyway, um, I, th- I was probably thinking about that because I finished my uh, book manuscript, sent it to a publisher, um, and the guy said he likes the writing and likes the content, but the book is not for them, which was kind of funny. It was kind of like something that you would hear in high school, right, where uh, the person tells you all these great things about you and how wonderful you are, but then doesn't want to date you. Which I always thought was kind of stupid, right? If you don't like the person, you like the person. Like, don't. It's like to make yourself feel good that you're being so nice to this person, um, but it, does, it doesn't really help, right? I don't, probably don't want to hear how great you are. Um, anyway, that, that, that's high school. So, um, as as a writer, you know you're going to deal with the, with rejections. Um, so it was encouraging to see that it was just maybe a matter of what they could publish, um, and so getting the positive feedback from the guy was, 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 was positive. It was good. You know, I would have obviously liked for them to publish the book, but it made me think about just different opportunities. Um, so many more books are being published online right now, uh, like self-publishing online and the royalties are so much different. I was talking with Nick Jans on the podcast and he came and talked to, uh, we didn't come and talk, but he was talking to my adventure lit class via zoom and mentioned that yeah, he's a prolific writer and he is, well, he didn't say I'm a prolific writer, but he said that he's had some books that have been successful. But even though he's had books that have been successful, publishers are saying no to some of his books. They're just like, ah, you know, we just don't really have, there's not much of a market for what he's writing, more of the personal essay type stuff, even though it is about Alaska and it's an Alaskan writing about Alaska rather than someone who's coming up from down south staying up here for 15 minutes and then writing about Alaska and their Alaska experience. So even someone with a reputable name who's been a um, a prolific writer in Alaska can have a difficult time with some of these publishers, and that's I think there's just so much out there. Um, so I didn't you know take it too hard. He'd been rejected before. Um, but during the editing process, I was thinking about just how things read. I had what I wrote, but it can't just be for me like it is for me, but also I have to consider the audience of what I'm trying to portray or what I'm trying to say to the audience. And so the first read through I was reading through and I thought, hey, this sounds pretty good. And then I started reading through like someone who's, you know, in the audience and like, how can they take this wrong? Or, you know, what about this statement can be misconstrued? And it was really weird to think about writing like that and just have this Rather than just consider whether or not I'm articulating myself well or I'm telling a story, there's value, there's a takeaway, there's something that relates to the audience, just to be that concerned about how bad someone might take it or how someone might misinterpret this or miss the point, because that's what we do now. We just take a sentence out of context. We don't even read the book. We don't even listen to the podcast. We just take a sentence that we liked out of it or hated out of it. And then just share and brutally attack people online and like pretend that's a personality, right? Because you, you, you share all this negative stuff as if you're like the the keeper of the conscious or the moral of the country, and it's it's pretty crazy. Like I I think there have been some social corrections that have happened that have probably been good, um, but man, it's the amount of misery out there and the amount of people who are upset if other if anybody's happy. How you? How dare you be happy with all go, that's going on? How how can you possibly be happy? You must not care. It's like oh my gosh, that was uh, toward the end of the of the manuscript, and I was rereading it today. Um, I got to the end. I've been just getting after it after I the, um, the guy sent the email and said that uh, they were going to publish it. I just started rereading it and editing it, and made a lot of changes and um, more cosmetic changes though really i thought from a from the stand like more clarifications right make things sound a little bit better and then i got to the end and i'm just looking at kind of reflecting on the year and have a positive sort of reflection and how many people would you know say that's tone deaf even though in the in in the manuscript i'd say yeah it's kind of tone deaf but i don't know why people would have to apologize for having a good 2020 
I got I got engaged. I'm gonna get married. But nope, can't have fun. Can't can't be good. That's just something else. Like, there are a lot of people who had good 2020s, or um, you know, think things were bad. Or like within the context, like why why shouldn't we be able to appreciate what we do have more? I think a lot of people should be speaking up and say, man, this was a a definite year to reflect and say, there's a lot of bad things going on. So the fact that things worked out well for me, you know what? Gosh dang it, it was a great stinking year. After years of fine print contracts and getting ripped off by big wireless providers, if we've learned anything, it's that there's always a catch. So when I first heard that Mint Mobile offers premium wireless starting at just 15 bucks a month, I thought, what's the catch? But after talking to them and using their service, it all made sense. There isn't one. Mint Mobile's secret sauce is that they're the first company to sell wireless service online only. They cut out the cost of retail stores and pass those sweet savings directly to you. For anyone who hates their phone bill, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just 15 bucks a month. I was hesitant about having to get a new phone and a new phone number, but with Mint, you can use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone and your same phone number along with all of your existing contacts. Mint Mobile gives you the best rate whether you're buying for one or for a family, and at Mint, families start at two lines. All plans come with unlimited talk and text plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and to get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash waypoint. That is mintmobile.com slash waypoint. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash waypoint. All right. it's a, I don't know why people think that it's rubbing it in someone else's face. If you say, man, you know, 2020 was a good year. It was a good, memorable, memorable year uh, for me. It's not that you are pretending nothing bad happened. It's just understanding that, yo, know, okay, there's there's uh, there's some possible potential good in this. There's not in, in the bad things that happened, but that doesn't mean that the entire world is terrible and that there's no reason for any sort of joy. I think when people start attacking other people because they feel joy is absolutely absurd and ridiculous. Wouldn't we, wouldn't we want to be reminded of positive things going forward? Otherwise, like what's worth saving, right? If everything sucks and everything is, is rigged and stupid and, and mean, like, what are we trying to do? What are we trying to get back to, right? So it was interesting reading that um, and, and editing and, and looking back and, there are times when you look back at stuff that you did, and you think, "Man, that was that was pretty good." I'm 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 pretty proud of that. And other times you look back and you think, "Gosh, that sucked. That was terrible." Um, I'm sure like video content makers think the same thing. You know, how many people have things out there to look at their first version or the first thing they posted on YouTube, and it just well, you know, it's kind of clunky. You know, before they got uh, better shots or better equipment or better angles or just got better at the whole thing, and they look back at the first things they did, and they're like, "Yeah, yeah, I've improved a lot since then." Which is the point, right? How many people have things that they wrote or or content, videos, things like that, that they, they have done but they're too scared to publish because what if it's not good enough or they're just keep holding it back, holding it back until it's perfect, until it's perfect, until it's perfect, until it's so perfect, and then you've trained yourself to never get anything done. It's not that you push bad content out there. It's that at some point you got to finish it, move on, and improve, get the feedback, and you can't just practice being scared and not doing it so yeah it happens happens with the writing uh, quite a bit imposter syndrome you know, you think why would anybody read this book and then other times you read it and think well that's it's pretty solid and then you start worrying about the people who are in the comments and that's uh that's what's going to happen you know that's especially if you are uh if you had joy in 2020 or you're a hunter you know i think i don't think that we're victims at all but you know there's definitely some there are definitely voices that are being amplified out there that are uh, that are anti-hunting, anti, and they just don't really get it, don't really understand it. They're uh, upset at people for having um, the wherewithal or the whatever, the, the mindset to go out and get some food for themselves, and there's no possible way that it could be beneficial. The only possible reason someone would want to go out there and kill an animal is because they're sadistic or because they're a psychopath. So, not even uh, trying to understand. So I do wonder that 
in the 64,000 words that I've written, uh, how many of those lines could be taken out of context? And then why am I worried so much about those lines taken out of context rather than the good lines where I think I encapsulated life pretty well? Uh, at least for me, you know, I'm not a you know, prolific writer, orator, you know, I've written a column for 12 or so years now, but, you know, there's a long way for me to go and improve, and a lot of people out there that are better than me, and that's, you know, at least it's not, it's not scaring me to the point of not doing anything about it, so, um, yeah, so we'll, we'll see what uh, happens, we'll see if uh, I'm looking into different publishing uh, opportunities, and maybe go with the self-publishing thing as long as the royalties are good and work on uh, marketing and this and that. And I just don't want it to sit around. And I also am not sure that while it would be nice to have it backed by a big publisher, I don't know if I want to wait around and and hope that someone finally publishes it just to get that validation, right? And then you get a couple thousand dollars in, um, in advance and then you get 8% royalties or 10% royalties or whatever. So I don't know. I think the self-publishing thing might end up being the way to go and just kind of swallow the pride a little bit and say, all right, I'm going to do it myself. And uh, I won't be able to claim that it's the published by Lyons or Schuster, Simon is it Simon and Schuster, Schuster and Schuster, whatever those big publishers are. But, you know, it is what it is. So coming up on February now, which is nice. Means we got uh, we got spring, not too far away. A couple weeks. Um, some days it feels like it's a lot closer. You get the, even though it's a little a little cooler um, than than a nice warm spring day, you still get uh, just that sunlight. You just feel like there's some optimism in the air, and then it stays around a little bit longer. So like deeper into the afternoon, you got some daylight still, and man, that's that's great. That is great. Looking forward to a lot of stuff in uh, 2021. Pretty excited for for just all the opportunities and to live in a place where you can just be reminded of all the great things that are out there, and then have the opportunity to have a job and write about it. And can't beat it. Stuff. So we will call that episode 181. Make sure you check out the mediocrealaskan.com. I've been writing some other things on Medium as well. Um, it's not free. Uh, so I'm trying to make a little bit, uh, get some other thoughts out there. I have my, my column for the Juno Empire is every other week. And so I'm looking to maybe uh, side hustle a little bit more. So uh, check out medium.com and uh, look for my articles. So uh, talk to you next time. Thanks for listening. <laughs>